Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Um, my name is Jaggi uh, in short. I have, have with me uh, Anupam Bora, who is one of the product managers, uh, along with me. And I have two TMEs who are staging the demo for you as we speak. So we will have the demos. Uh, once I finish the slides, you will also see the demo side by side towards the end of my presentation. That being said, uh, let me uh, jump into what we're going to talk about is the converged access uh, switch, which we in, in introduced at Cisco Live in January. Uh, this is the Catalyst 3850 switch, which is uh, going to reside at the access. And uh, here, what I'm going to stress on is more towards the one network, which we're going to talk about in the next uh, few minutes of the slides, which are going to be here. When, uh, Few marketing slides here. Um, what we are trying to talk, what, we are, what I'm trying to show here is these are the three mega trends which are being seen in the market today. Uh, that is, uh, BYOD is one of them. The other thing is the mobility and uh, video. These are the three things which are driving the driving the uh, uh, market. So, in BYOD, what we're talking is basically securing access to all the devices that are coming into the uh, into the network or the infrastructure how we are making your network secure, how, what kind of access is, your access is going to, you're going to grant to those machines. And at the same time, if you have guests coming in, how do you make sure that your guest traffic is segregated away from, from the, uh, the, the, the infrastructure, the corporate infrastructure which you have? Again, mobility, as I mentioned, the influx of uh, handheld devices, smartphones, smart devices into the market has taken away the whole, uh, whole crowd. So you can see in your own enterprise or in, in, in any enterprise, you will see people coming up with at least two, three maximum uh, devices in, uh, along with them. I mean, uh, today, two devices is common. I mean, three devices is, is okay, is manageable, but going to four is luxury. At the same time, a couple of things which we're talking about as we are here, we are streaming this live. When you're streaming this video, it becomes very important. That's where uh, the support for multicast, all those things which is there, uh, we are talking about video conferencing, multicast streaming. These are things which we are making sure that the infrastructure is ready, uh, plumbed ready when, when you have the next wave coming in uh, into, the, into the market. So, and this is again another marketing slide where the wireless market is moving towards. Uh, just to set up the, set the, uh, the stage before we go into the one network. I mean, previously, when we started earlier, we were on the left-hand side where it was, I mean, it's, it's good to have, but going towards uh, what we are today, uh, we're talking about wireless being a mission critical application that everybody needs to have. I mean, uh, sitting here, I don't think none of you are connected wired, if I'm right. All of you are wireless, so that clearly tells us that we are in a, a mission critical uh, uh, mode at this point to have wireless uh, support everywhere. At the same time, going forward, how the new technology which is going to come into the, into the market, the 11 AC, when it comes in, you, you don't have to go and scramble then to see if your uh, network is right, right, correctly plumbed or rightly plumbed. So that's where we are bringing into the, into the market the 3850 which, is the, which constitutes the one network part of the, uh, of the whole infrastructure. One policy, one management, and one network is what we're talking about. This whole thing, one, 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 uh, is not equal to three here. It's equal to unified access. So towards the end, if I say one, 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 I, I, would, I, mean, I, I would expect at least you say, saying that it's going to be unified access. So that's where we are. So that being said, this network, Pretty, pretty much uh, recalls what you have today. If you look at, the, uh, look at the whole network towards the bottom, you have the whole management system, you have the, uh, the whole, uh, uh, what do you call, the access, access systems all here, where you do the policy, the policy, uh, policy engine, all those things are at the bottom. And again, you have the switch on access point, and also you have a controller at, at, the, at, the, uh, at the core. But going forward, what's happening is we are consolidating all the, uh, all the uh, policies into one box, which is the ICE, the Identity Service Engine. At the same time, we are also consolidating all the management into one box, which is the Cisco Prime infrastructure. And what you will see is at the access, one network is introduced with the Catalyst 3850. This is a, 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 38, this is a, a, this is a Catalyst switch with an integrated wireless controller on the ASIC itself. 
So that's where I'm, I'm, I'm stressing on this. Basically, it, I'm saying it's the wireless controller integrated onto the system itself. So again, here, what we're talking about is we are distributing the wired and wireless data plane so that we have, uh, uh, we, we terminate the cap map, which was happening earlier at the controller in your distribution block or in your core down at the axis itself. At the same time, along with that, we are also introducing another box uh, which is complementing the, the 3850, which is the 5760. This is again a, a, based on the same, uh, uh, same uh, uh, ASIC which we have. It basically, uh, it, both these boxes going forward are iOS manageable. When you can configure, manage these boxes using single iOS. There's no longer multiple operating systems to manage wired and wireless. Single point of management, single point of uh, single iOS, which we are talking about. At the same time, the same ASIC is on both, both the boxes. This is where the whole architecture is changing at the axis. What, what is the highlight of the box? I mean, if you look at the whole box, what, what, it, what it can provide, you can see from going from the right hand side over there uh, uh, clockwise, it can support up to, I mean, apart from the wired features, it can support up to, up to 50 access points and 2,000 clients in a stack of four. And you can gain up, to, we can get to up to 40 gigabits of bandwidth per switch. And what, what is key thing which you need to know here is the wireless cap app termination is going to happen at the access itself. It's no longer going to your controller, which is going to be there at the distribution or the core. And again, I'm talking about 40 gigabits of uplink bandwidth. When I say uplink bandwidth, there are multiple uh, 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 uplink modules available. One of them is a four into one gig module, which can support one gig uh, uplinks. And we also have four into 10 gig uplink modules. And at the same time, we have two into uh, 10 gig uplink modules. When uh, you can mix and match in those, on the 24 port, you can use the, 20, uh, the two into 10 gig modules. And the four, on, the, on the 48 port, you can go with the four into 10 gig modules. And you're good. Question. So I have a slightly different perspective on this, just offering it for a comment, and maybe it's helpful. Sure. For years I've been wondering, why doesn't Cisco have more bandwidth between the controller and the network? Mm -hmm. Given Because I did, since I'm doing shared bandwidth with wireless, I don't want to have over subscription going into the back end of wires now. Absolutely. And I've been fixated on that, and what I understand was that possibly one of the limitations was the cap wrap encapsulation mm -hmm. burden on the controller. And by distributing that and by distributing the network connectivity, uh, you solve an amazing problem, which gives you a platform going forward for a 11 ac 11 ac absolutely. So uh, I'll come to the next slide, when I'll, I'll, which, which I'll explain all the benefits of uh, this particular architecture. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. So we used to have the 3750 with the integrated wireless LAN controller. Yeah. Is just this the next generation of that? No, or is the no. I mean, uh, please, <laughs> please change your mindset. OK. I mean, uh, this is, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, it is integrated into the ASIC on the box itself. Which we didn't get. The, which it was just the previous, server stack on top. Yeah, previously okay. it was duct tape. I would use the word duct tape, but here it is a, a, a chip itself. The, the, the whole ASIC can handle wireless at the, at the board level itself. So that's the thing. So when I, when I came up, I knew this question would come up. That's why I stressed on that particular line, integrated wireless chip on, on, the, on, the, on the system itself. Going forward, again, we have what is the granular QoS. Uh, which is very key. I mean, we're going to talk about this. We're going to demonstrate it in the demos. Uh, I mean, uh, we're going to have wired and wireless policies at the access. You do not have wired policies for the, at, at the access and wireless policies at the controller and the distribution. You're going to have everything at the access. Uh, you, you're going to have, you're going to see SGT, SG, SG, uh, SG ACLs coming up in the next release. Uh, we can have up to, as I mentioned earlier, 2,000 clients per stack. And again, the fans and everything are uh, uh, field re replaceable. Stack power, uh, whatever was available with the with the uh, 3750, we're using the same stack stacking uh, uh, power stacking mechanism on, on the 3850s. Key thing to note here is we are going to get about 40, 480 gigabits of stacking bandwidth, uh, where we are using a newer architecture. As I mentioned, this is a new ASIC. It's a new architecture, new set of uh, a, a whole hardware available on, on the 3850s where you can scale up to 480 gigabits of uh, stacking bandwidth. 
So these are the key highlights of the, the, the uh, UADP ASIC which we have introduced into the 3850. <clears throat> that being said, there's one more, uh, one more uh, uh, evolution which we're going to talk about. In the past, everything was concentrated over iOS, but we are moving to what is known as the iOS XC. Uh, this uh, iOS, we, this was more like a, a, a modern iOS with, uh, which was enabled on the multi-core. As I said here, on the 3850, you have multiple cores available. So how do I really get the advantage or draw the advantages of the, the multi-core? So what we have done here is we have hosted some of the applications which were there, like the hosted application, the, the wireless controller module, the WCM is hosted on, on a kernel which is at the bottom at, uh, of the iOS. Basically, the, the features which were there for iOS are still imported, which you see in the blue, which is on the right-hand side. At the same time, some of the, uh, the feature components which were there on the iOS, we have moved it to here. But again, we are hosting multiple uh, hosted applications on the 3850. Key thing to note here is what you're seeing here is just a small tip of the iceberg. There are much more things to come in future, so please do stay, stay tuned uh, for our future uh, updates. What are the benefits of this whole converged access which I'm talking about? Single platform for wired and wireless. No longer, I mean, it's a single iOS you, should, you can use to manage. No longer a, a AirOS or iOS for different operating systems to manage different systems. It's single iOS. At the same time, it's going to have a common uh, administration point and also uh, a single release. There's no more multiple releases. Coming back to the 3750 switch, the wireless controller, you, I could do multiple updates. Uh, I could have a different uh, uh, switch release and I could have a different controller release, but here it's going to be one common, common release going forward. Network-wide visibility. The other thing which is going to happen, since I'm doing a cap -F termination at the access itself, there is no longer cap up in your distribution or to your core. So what happens, for any troubleshooting, you have more visibility into your access layer and the distribution layer or the core. So that is one thing which you need to keep, uh, that's the highlight of this particular box. Consistent security and quality of service control, as I mentioned earlier, single, single place of application, I mean single point of wireless and wireless policies where it can up apply. And I can more go more granular on this. I can have uh, uh, go. I can going forward, we will have to the level of saying, okay, I can based on the application, I can start applying bandwidth. Here, with the same thing, we have introduced new things called as the as, as dedicating bandwidth for guest users, dedicating bandwidth for for corporate users. No longer the guest users can can jump into the bandwidth of of enterprise users. All those things are there. At the same time. We have called uh, we have called as the the uh, AFD, which is the uh, fairness distribution across anybody who's coming on. So if you have some of you um, can be here uh, watching can be watching a, a, a game a, pre a recorded game yesterday night on the network. You can be hogging the bandwidth uh, uh, on that particular link. But at the same time, when new users coming in, they'll be they'll be starting to uh, starve on bandwidth, which was the earlier case. With the AFT feature which we have here, everybody will be given a base minimum bandwidth saying that I can share common bandwidth across everybody. And the person who is hogging the bandwidth as and when the users start jumping onto the network, his part of the share gets being chopped off and get, guarantees bandwidth to every user coming in onto the network. Maximum resiliency with a, a, a fast, stateful recovery. So we, uh, this thing, uh, you need to, you will see this in the demo at the same time, what I want to stress is, when you have it in a stack, what happens is we have an active and a standby uh, 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 switch in, in the stack. So in case anything goes wrong on the active switch, within a fast, within less than a second, a microsecond, you will see that the standby takes over and, and you will have the services available for the rest of the network. And if you're distributing your services across the stack on the network, you'll see that only, only the people who are connected to the Active switch might will have will have the will have a network outage, but the rest of the people in the stack will still have uh, connectivity, and their business continues as normal. The the other thing which we have is the scale with the distributed wired and wireless data plane. As one of our, our colleague mentioned here, what I'm doing is basically this. I don't I do not want to carry all my traffic over my distribution to the core. So what I'm doing here is I'm distributing the bandwidth at the at the edge itself, saying that okay, whatever when 11 AC comes in, 
what I'll have is good amount of bandwidth to carry other applications on, 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 on the distribution and the core so that I have that free from all the 11 AC clients which are going to come in the future. So that way, I'm distributing my, uh, my bandwidth at the access itself where each switch can scale up to like 40 gigabits of bandwidth. At the same time, when I have, uh, uh, you can go up to like 480 gigabits of stackable bandwidth when you have a stack of four. Let me go back and give you a small refresher question. This, I just want to make sure I'm clear here. So you're taking the one controller. We're not talking legacy. You're going to combine all the libraries from the wireless controller into the one controller. You're going to drop that onto a 3850. Tell me about how, how am I going to take 3750Xs that I'm buying today and integrate that in as a forwarding element? Because I okay. need that bump in the wire, right? OK. Uh, policy, we need bump in the wire. Okay. As the question said, I'm not going to rip and replace my network on gotcha. the kits I'm buying today. Okay. The the 3750, the 3850 has all the feature set. I, I would say as of today at FCS, we have about 60% of uh, of uh, feature set on the on the 3850. You can still <laughs> use the 3850 as a 3750. I want to use a 3750 as a 3850. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You're, you're, you're embedding intelligence that can do control plane functionality there. I okay. need to use something that's forward and target, right? Yeah. To get a bump in the wire, to yep. run traffic through, have a reactive punt for BYOD or whatever else, anything else proactive. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm getting your question right. How, how can this control my legacy network that I'm still buying today? You can still have it on your legacy network. It's not going to. So I, I, I want to make my legacy network that I'm buying today a new network. I need to uh, integrate. I these think I can answer this. No. But, <laughs> that's no. A bad answer. Today, in order for this to work right, the APs have to terminate directly onto the 3850. Yep. The 3750 cannot do what the 3850 can, and part of that is because the 3750 doesn't run the iOS XE. So, if it, am I correct in assuming that the magic? part that makes the 3850 the wireless controller is running sidebar in the second processor almost as it's basically running a wireless controller on a second no. where you would run Wireshark or something okay. like that right now. You are partially correct, it's, but it's not on a separate processor, it's in the ASIC itself. It's, it's, a, it's a hardware that has the capability for both <coughs> switching and wireless controller functionality. Right. So to answer your question, like the customers who already have 3750X or are still buying 3750X, we are not asking them to do a, to do a like fork with upgrade of 3750X, replace all of it with 3850. In the new architecture, you can have both 3850 and 3750X side by side. For 3750X, you can terminate your wireless at a centralized controller. Right. For 3850, you yep. can terminate your cap web at the access. But the, the problem that I think that Bryn's speaking to is he has a complete deployment of 3750X right now. Uh -huh. The 3850, as it exists in its form today, is not compatible with the 3750X. It is. 3850, at the end of the day, is still a stackable switch. But so it, you can, it uses the new Stackwise 480. It's with, new, so that's why it's not backward compatible, right. but it's still, at the end of the day, is a stackable switch. And majority of our customers would probably use 3850 just as a switch. Now, if the, soft, if the controller is all software-based, mm -hmm. Is there a roadmap, and you may or may not be able to say this, is there a roadmap to start including that functionality in like devices like the 3750X? No. Okay. No. Because it, it's not a software, it's, it's doing it. It requires the ASIC on the 3850. Okay, so, well, then, then tell me how. So, obviously, not every 3850 is going to be around this controller. So, I could have one building that's got five floors, I turn up some license on the basement that's going to run a controller in that, right? So, how, what's, your, what's your forwarding instantiation method? To the rest of the switches. Give me, give me about yeah. five yeah, minutes. So, I okay. have the slides. When I, I'll, 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 that will answer your question. Okay, another question. Okay. Yeah. Were you going to jump into the demo at all? Yeah. You guys have about 15 minutes left until the next team. Sure, we'll do. So, yeah. Okay. So, so how does this uh, affect the guest anchor feature? Okay. Because it seems like we're distributing things out, which is a lot of that stuff doesn't work right now. Okay. Today, uh, today <laughs> the 3850. Uh, Cannot be placed as a, as a guest anchor. You can still use a 50, uh, the 5508 or a Wisem 2 as your guest anchor. But going forward, yes, uh, the, 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 the guest anchor functionality will be available on the 38. So there's a lot of stuff on the 5760 and the 3850 that don't work right now because they ported the entire code base to iOS. So they're basically 
reinventing the wheel right now. So give it time is the answer that I got when I started asking those very same questions. So going, going a little uh, uh, back, back to the CUWN architecture, this is the whole architecture which we're talking about. Today you have the 30, 3750 uh, uh, connect, terminating the access points. You have the controller at the, at the, at the uh, core or the, the distribution, and you have your, uh, the distribution network. So what's going to happen is your, the yellow lines, are yellow, yellow lines are the uh, cap app termination which is going to happen. So just, I'll bring back this diagram after I talk about the 3850, you can see the change, what's, what's going to happen there. So going back, the, for, the, the guest anchor is again at the at DMZ. Then this is the, the, uh, the EOIP tunnels which you're talking about. So let me step into the next few slides. So key thing to note here, and this is one thing which I want to show you, the, the traffic flow, what, is, what happens today. So the same thing, if you have a, a, a switch to which an access point is connected and also you have a wire phone connected, when you will see that the traffic is all, is all north-south. So it's basically uh, the, the, the traffic from a wired phone to wireless phone connected, to a same, connected on the same switch will travel north-south as, as you see here. Going forward, I will bring up this diagram at a later stage. After I explain it, you will see the difference what's going to happen there. Some of the key, I mean, I want to introduce some physical, uh, some of the jargons which I'm going to use here. One is a mobility agent. Mobility agent is available on all the boxes as of today. These are not new things which, I'm, which we're inventing, which is there on the boxes today as well. But we have not exclusively called out. Here, all the cap up termination of the access points happen on, on that particular box, which is, which is the mobility agent. What is a mobility controller? When you need to roam from one place to another place, the functions like RRM, roaming, all these things between subdomains happens on the, on the MC. So, and also we have what is known as the mobility oracle, which is the, the supersede of everybody on a huge network. When we scale this whole network with the 5760, we're talking about 70, 72,000 access points and 864,000 clients. You need what is known as the mobility oracle to maintain the whole database. Some of the logical entities which we're going to talk about is basically uh, the mobility groups and also the, the mobility domains uh, and also the another thing which is called a switch, switch peer group. 